All right, before we get on with the rest of the show, here's one reason why we don't need yet another voice in this country. We're already subsidising an entire race-based industry to the tune of billions of dollars every single year. And we're entitled to ask, where is that money ending up and just who is being enriched by it? Of course, the elites don't want the dark underbelly of this scandalous waste of money exposed, which is why the Senate recently voted down a motion from Jacinta Nampajimpa Price for an investigation of the accountability of Aboriginal land councils. It would be duplication, one vested interest claimed, as they were hoping to avoid it. Well, the voice would be duplication too. We've already got a massive voice in this country. Let me give you just an example from one area. In the town of Sejuna, on South Australia's far west coast, the population is around 3,500 people. And in the 2021 census, 870 of them identified as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. Now, a South Australian politician told me this week that there are more than 70 individual organisations devoted to servicing those 870 Indigenous people. And I don't doubt some of those organisations are doing great work, but I simply don't understand how another layer of bureaucracy based in Canberra and filled with the same power brokers and the same profit makers of the Aboriginal industry will do any more for a place like Sejuna than the one organisation for about every 15 Indigenous people in that place? The answer is clear. Vote no to Canberra's racist, racist and divisive voice.